video, I'm going to be showing you all about Microsoft Project. You've probably seen my videos. I'm an expert on this subject. I have lots of other videos, but this is for beginners. As you get more and more uh, accustomed to the software, go take a look at some of my other videos, but this is just for you beginners. All right, so it is an intimidating product, right? We've got graphs on the right-hand side. We've got uh, tables, Excel on the left-hand side, right? However you want to think about it, this timeline here. Let's break it down. It's three sections. Tables, charts, timeline. Um, first thing you want to do is come into Microsoft Project and click on the project ribbon. This is how you set up your project. Click project information. This is where we can set the start date for the project, right? Let's say I'm going to start it on the 17th of this year. Um, that will be the date that all of the tasks in your project will be scheduled from, right? So there we go. Calendars, you may want to set up a calendar for this. If not, it's going to be the default eight to five, Monday through Fridays, no exceptions, right? So there's not going to be any holidays. There's not going to be any uh, vacations, company shutdown. So first thing you want to do is create your own personal uh, calendar for that, adding exceptions. I have videos on how to set up calendars in Microsoft Project. Go take a look at that, but you can use the standard. It'll get you 90% of the way there. It just won't allow for those holidays. So pretty happy with that. Let's press OK. <clears throat> so first thing you want to do is come in and put the names, the tasks of your project in here. Now, by default, Microsoft Project will manually schedule these tasks. We'll look at what the differences are. But first thing I always do is come into here, click Auto Scheduled. And I'll show you a little tip. Go to File, Options and in schedule you can set that new tasks are auto scheduled for all new projects right and that will you never have to flip that again it's a nice little tip there so auto scheduled means we turn the scheduling engine on manually scheduled we turn it off and i'll show you the differences so let's put in some tasks one task two task three you get the idea. You can see because it's auto scheduled, it's giving me default durations from that project start date on the 17th. I can come in here and adjust the durations. You can see you have a little question mark. That means you've never touched that, right? It's estimated duration right now. And you can say four days, maybe, you know, four question mark. I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with four days of task four. Then I'm gonna put in a milestone. To do that, just type milestone or whatever the name of that milestone is and make it a zero day duration and watch what happens on the Gantt chart. Boom, we have a milestone. I'm gonna now come to the task one. I'm gonna to come to the task ribbon and I'm gonna click insert task. And we can actually put in a summary task, All right? So in the task ribbon, insert summary task. Ah, you notice that it actually by default indented the task beneath it. If I undo that, select these tasks here and added summary task. Now it knows that these, this summary task is going to summarize the tasks that we previously selected. Let's give it a name for the summary task. We'll call it phase one. All right. And you can see that it's currently at five days, right? It's saying that the project is going to take five days. This milestone is kind of saying it's going to be done on 217. Huh? That's because we haven't linked the tasks together. I'm going to show you really basic how to link them together. This is the logical dependencies between the tasks, right? So if you think about a project, you have a bunch of stuff to do. The tasks are always going to have a sequence. You want to sequence the task and tell Microsoft Project the logic of those tasks and the sequence of those tasks. And Microsoft Project will give you dates. That's it. That's what Microsoft Project is good for. It gives you dates and obviously costing and all that good information that you're going to want for your project schedule. But essentially, that's the, the nuts and bolts of it. So let's put that logical sequence in. Again, I have another video on linking tasks together. It's called linking tasks in Microsoft Project. I go into full detail on how we can do that. But select the tasks in a row, click link tasks, and you'll see they're all now linked. And my duration of my project is now 16 days, which is the sum of the uh, tasks within it. And I'm also going to link task four to the milestone. So once that task four is completed, we'll know our milestone date of 310. 
all right so we're good there and you know maybe i want to change that four days to be five days and now we know that the project's going to finish on 311 if i make this task one day 37 if we need to add a new task that we hadn't previously considered i can come in here and click insert, insert task and i'll call this one task 1a right and this can take five days ah we need to add that into my linking sequence there because we didn't link, link them if that's necess if that's the case right if there is a logical tie there right so we can break the links between the tasks that i've selected and then relink and we're done oh actually i've got double links there you see how i did that so between one and one a they're linked but one uh, task two is also linked to one as well as one a so we can actually come into the predecessors column and say Let's just make that dependent on three. And we don't have that double linking. So just be careful of that. All right, so you can add more phases, more, more tasks, more milestones. You get the idea. Another thing you can do here is let's summarize the entire project. So I come to the project, uh, the uh, view ribbon. I can select the, in fact, I think it's in the Gantt chart format, project summary task. This is going to be a task that summarizes the entire project for us. So you can always see this duration of your entire project, start and finish dates of your entire project. All right, so next thing we're going to do is add phase two in here. Phase two, task five, task six, and milestone uh, two, and then project complete. Now we can see that these have all gone under this summary task. We want to outdent to do that. In fact, let's take phase two and just outdent that. Think of it like a bulleted list, right? Now we know which is part of that particular phase. These tasks are all indented. And if you can't see that visually, you can come to the Gantt chart tools and then check outline number. Now you can see the work breakdown structure. One, 1.1, 2, 3, 2, 2.1, 2, yada, yada. You get it, right? That's the outline number. It's kind of handy, especially when you're setting up tasks so you can visually see that breakdown structure of your project. And I'm going to link those tasks together. And I'm going to link milestone to task five. All right? I'm linking the two phases together. See how my project summary task just went up to 24 days. You know, a quick note, the blue change highlighting. That means something just changed as a result of your last click. So the finish date moved out, start date didn't change. Finish date moved out and we're 24 days and all these dates changed based on the last click. It's nice if you're like looking at task six, if I push this out, what happens? Well, finish date is obviously pushed out and the start and finish dates of uh, milestone two and the project completion date have all pushed and the project summary task has pushed durations pushed. so that blue change highlight is quite handy to have let's make project complete a milestone click zero days milestone two milestone done so you've got phases you've got stages the next thing you would do is add some resources to your project Better way to do that rather than just coming here and starting typing in names is to go into the view ribbon and go to the resource sheet view. This is the best place to set up all your resources. I'm gonna to put Tom, I'm gonna to put Scarlett, my little girl's name, Addison, and we'll do James. And I'm gonna come into the standard rate, 60 bucks, 60 bucks, 60 bucks, 60 bucks. Now you will notice it's all in dollars, right? If you're working in the UK, you can change the currency to pounds and, and do all that good stuff. That is all done within the project options dialog here. I'm not gonna get into that, it's, it's a lot, right? But you can see all of these things can be set up in here. For example, I think uh, for advanced is where we set the currency. Um, and, huh. Maybe not. I forget where that's exactly sent. Let me let's look at it. Schedule. Huh. Display. Currency, there it is. So, you know, you can change the currency from USD to GBP. Let's do that. Great British pounds. Okay. Boom, we've got some pounds in there. I like it. 
and you know those options can be set up go and take a look at the project options dialog that's for advanced features and getting your schedule to be exactly what you want adding in additional information related to how you want your projects to play out over time all right so we've got our resources there most of the time you're just going to have work resources these are people that are prorated over time um, there are other types of resources check out my other video very popular on resource planning in microsoft project that one's a great one to dig into that this is just a beginner's video so i'm not going to bog you down with too much information we've got some high level resources now i can come into the resource names and say who's working on these tasks I'll put addison and tom on that one maybe just scarlett on this one maybe just james on this one as a rule of thumb you can assign a resource to a milestone but don't do it. It won't show up in the Gantt chart, but don't do it, right? It's a moment in time. It's not a task to be completed. There is no effort associated with that task. There's no duration. There's no work to be done. In fact, on that note, let's take a look at the work. As we add a task, a, a, as we add a resource to a task, like so, you can see that the hours will be calculated. 40 hours of work, that's based on 40 hours a week. Eight hours a day for five days is 40 hours, All right? If I had a second resource, 80 hours, All right? Because there's more people working on the same task for the same duration. I have a, a whole thing on assigning resources in Microsoft Project. Take a look at that video because you can get granular with this. You can say, you know, actually I want to um, make it that they're only working part time on that task, right? Let me show you a quick example of that, I guess. In the resource ribbon, I like using the assign resources dialog. In here, I can come in and say, you know, James and Scarlett are working for, uh, let's put James on there 50%. So of his typical working day, eight hours, because we haven't set up the calendars in any other way, he would only work half time on there. All right, so there we go. Now what happened there? Yeah, the hours didn't change. Hmm. That's because when you set the hours for a task, adjusting the resources is not going to uh, flip that hourly rate. It just doesn't do it that way. You have to, when assigning a resource, come in here. In fact, let's use the assign resources this time. When you make that assignment, say 50%, and then assign Addison. And then it will calculate the hours accordingly, right? One day, is eight hours plus four hours for Addison, it calculated to 12 hours, right? So you have to do these, the percent allocation at time of allocation. So technically speaking, I should come into this particular task and go to the view ribbon and look at the details of that task, which brings up this dialog here and come in and manually adjust that, right? 20 hours back to 40 because that's accurate because of the amount of thing. And now as we increase that, let's say if we go from five, let's keep it round numbers to 10, boom, 1480, because of the units, right? Because we have fixed units, so that's the variable that doesn't change. If you adjust the duration, the work's gonna change. If you adjust the work, the duration's gonna change, but the units will remain the same. Very complicated. I have lots of videos on assigning resources in Microsoft Project. I suggest you get good at that because that's going to be the make or break between good and bad project schedules. There's other stuff you can do, like once you know my project's in flight, we can now baseline the project. Project information, in fact, no, wrong button. I can come into the project, set baseline, set baseline, okay. What does that do? It locks in the hours. So we know that this project, when we first planned it out, was going to be five, six hours and 52 minutes, <laughs> 652 hours. As the project progresses, things are going to change. Timelines are going to push out. Costs are going to change, right? We need to be able to see what did we originally plan for and what were we actually planned for. And in the Gantt chart, you can see, uh, you can actually see the baseline on there as well. If you come in here, you can visualize it. So you can see what happened down here with that duration changing for this task. Push this one out. Then this one obviously had to push out because it was linked. Now our milestones have changed. Other things you could do as your project goes on is tracking project progress. I have a whole video on that. I don't want to get into it in this one, but this is the nuts and bolts basics of Microsoft Project. 
I have more in-depth videos I suggest you take a look at. Please like, subscribe, consider becoming a member of my channel if you like what you get and I can actually create custom content just for you. All right, thanks so much for watching today and have a great day.